Derek is a perfect example of a person that lives in the moment. The next moment is another moment. He's lucky. The, he's lucky in that respect. He's lucky and he's cursed. This is going to hurt. It's time, it's time for, the for the Suffering Podcast. podcast. Leaving your mark on this world is the great hope that most strive to achieve. Something left behind to tell the world that you've been there. A legacy that says you contributed. For some, it's a great work of art. For others, it's a thought-provoking philosophy. And for many, it's the next generation. Those little humans that have our faces, continue our names, and share our mannerisms. The hard fact of life is that we're all one day going to pass on. What we do while we're here makes the difference of whether we will be remembered. Having an archetype for a child is a shining example of what life is supposed to be. I'm Kevin Donaldson here with Mike Felason. On this episode of The Suffering Podcast, we welcome back our very own Derek Taylor to discuss the suffering of a dad star. Derek's example as a father and as a professional musician is a beacon of hope and gives all of us fathers hope that one day we can be what our children really deserve. Derek, thank you so much for coming back. All right, it's great to see you guys. Again. Hey. This is always, like I said, I've known Derek for years. This is, I was looking forward to this. Derek's one of my very best friends. Yeah, I met you once. And and you haven't stopped talking to him since. No, I haven't. So it's just a nice guy. I is. haven't. I haven't. Before we get into anything, let's throw a shout out to our marquee sponsor. That's Toyota of Hackensack. We buy our cars from Toyota because we don't trust anybody. So go to toyotahackensack.com and let them find you a car. Now, Derek, as usual, mm -hmm. from the last time you were in here, which I think was episode 58, Mm -hmm. We've with, come a little bit of a long, like a long way yeah. since uh, last time you saw us. You know, you got cameras, we, got fancy microphones, nice accommodations. <laughs> yeah, we got a producer. You got um, caffeine, uh, caffeine water. Caffeina. But your episode is in our top three. Really? Yeah, yeah. it's wow. it's in our top yeah. three, and it's. It, it, I have to believe it's not just because you're a rock star your guitars for the band overkill i have to believe that i think it's more about how you raise your son derek and we're going to get into that but before we do as usual we take a question from our audience and this week's question comes from roxanne it says what is the most difficult thing about juggling a family and a career you seem to do it with a little bit more ease because you're at you're at such a high level and i thought it was a good question to ask you so you're our guest why don't you go first uh, juggling family and career? Yeah. Hmm. You've been well, doing it at the top level for, what, 30 years? Well, Listen, I had a hard time juggling family and family. <laughs> Never mind family and a career. <laughs> well, I think, um, I, I don't think it's juggling. I think it's part of your career, you know, because you can't really enjoy your career without your family, and you can't really enjoy your family without your career, because if you kind of, it's a balance between I don't find it that it's 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 juggling at all. It's doing what you have to do, you know, is if you want to be in this business and you want to have a family and be a musician touring on the road, there's a path you take. There's bad paths and there's good paths. You know, you have to is if if that's what you really want to do, you just make it work. You and find a way to make it work. You have to. I right. mean, like, you know, you have to find a way to make money. You have to find a way to eat. You have to find a way to do all sorts of things. Well, you know? I, th I think, like, when I read this question, here's, here's what I thought. You have this baby that you're responsible for. And if you're any type of man, you know, it takes anybody can be a dad, but it, you, you, to be a father, it takes a lot of work. And you're responsible for the, the health and well-being in order for that baby to live tomorrow. 100%. All right? So that juggling act of, like, I want to be there for my kid, but I got to support my kid. Like, that's the tough, like, that's that's the balancing act. Well, it's also, too, um, you know, when you say something like supporting, you know, we could all support, uh, you know, I could go out and dig ditches. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Am I going to be a good father? Am I going to, not that I would be a bad father digging ditches, but that's not what I was born to do. Mm. You, you follow what I'm saying? Right. It's like, if, you know... If I want to be a guitar player in a thrash metal band and make records and tour and, you know, do this, then that's going to that's going to reflect on my my family's life and my son's life because I'm a happier dad, you know. And well, that's a big thing. You're you wouldn't, be, you wouldn't be as happy digging ditches. You, you're actually doing what you love. So, well, you know, it goes back to mm -hmm. like, you know, like when I started this whole career in this music business, uh, I always thought that a job putting food on the table for, you know, 
whether I was drilling wells in the ground, I was, you know, working at, um, you know, some construction company or doing whatever. The job was to bring home food, to pay for the bills, to pay for the lights, the clothes and the food, and then to afford me to go rehearse with my buddies up in West Orange. The job was just another tool. Mm. It wasn't like this career thing where it's like... It's a means to an end, I guess, right? Right. So that's why I don't think it's... I think my whole path has always been that that's... It, there's no juggling. It's, you want this. You got to do this. Go get it. This is, what, this, is where, this is where it comes from, you know? Yeah. If you can... So, if you, so recently I heard this one. It's if you can envision the impossible... The, if you can envision the invisible, you can achieve the impossible. Pretty right. much, yeah. That's pretty much. Mike, what do you think? Sounds like a new song for you. <laughs> <laughs> I want producer credits. I don't write the songs. <laughs> I want producer credits. <laughs> Mike, what do you think? Well, you know, after a career in law enforcement, you know, with swinging shifts and all that, I mean, it, it's tough to, you know, put both of those worlds together. Mm. You know, but you, my whole thing is you have to make time. No matter how, no matter how tired you are. You always have to have time for your family. I mean, you know what it's like coming off of midnights, and you just don't want to do anything, you know. And and you know your your kid has a game when you want to go to sleep. You know, you you got to pick yourself up and go. You you know your 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 job is your career, and like you said, that's that's what puts food on the table and you know and keeps the lights on in the house. But you just gotta you, you got to make time for everything. And you're also doing something that you want to do. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're a human being too. You deserve. You've earned the right to do something that makes you happy. Right. But that's that's the balancing act. When I retired, like, I missed, my, my oldest was only three years old when I retired. But even at three years old, just working the way I work, because I was so nervous about being, I want that kid to have a better life, which, mm -hmm. again, that's that's not the best thing, best attitude in the world. But I want that kid to have everything and everything, and I'm going to work my ass off. I don't care if... I got to go dig ditches after work to go in order to go do that. Pick up all those side jobs. Right, all the side jobs, just to give them a little bit extra. Right. right? I always wanted to see my son as one day look at me like, Dad worked his ass off for me. But when I retired, I said to myself, I am now I have a, a unique opportunity. I'm going to be there for all the sporting events. I'm going to coach if I can. So whatever job I pick, like that became my priority. Right. You know, because I had already done my career. And now podcast starts, so it's it's all. See, but right. see, I, I had the unique opportunity of working in the town that I lived in. So if my kids had a game or something like that, I can go while I was working. Right. Yeah, you know, I never missed anything I did. So you you had this unique opportunity where your son, little Derek, well, he's not little, but young Derek, <laughs> 30, 33? Young, 33. young Derek yep. was young brought Derek. to shows. And although it's, it's nice to see, because my, my wife used to bring the kids to come see me when I was working because I, I, I sure, say, you want to see what daddy you know, does right. and everything like that. It was bittersweet to me because although I, I wanted them to see what I was doing, my wife's got to bring the kids with me so I can spend a little bit of time with them. Sure. It, you know, it, it, it was a little bittersweet to me. Did you ever feel that way when young Derek came around? Um, yes. Um, but with him, it's, a, it's, a, a little bit different. Than, it's a whole different well, dynamic. Let's get, let's get into that. Yeah, let's get it into is, that. It's let's a different recap. dynamic. Because what, what you were saying is yeah. like your, um, like your wife brings your kids to where you're, like you're on the job, and you're like, oh, let me show you the the patrol car, and mm -hmm. or whatever it is, you know what I'm saying, and it's kind of influencing him. Derek is like it, you know, it's the the Derek is a perfect example of a person that lives in the moment. The next moment is another moment. He's lucky. They're, he's lucky in that respect. He's lucky and he's cursed in the same <laughs> sentence. And it kind of makes sense. Like if I, for example, it's like he, when we, when we go to shows, he likes the lights. He, and he sees his father up there playing and he's all in this and that. And you know, everything, the light, the music, this and that, and everything's great. 10 seconds later, it's all out of his head. You know, yeah. it's it, he doesn't realize what that is. Now he only sees the car ride home. Right. So before we go any further, let's let's mm. give our audience a little window into not only you but your son Derek. His he's a special needs child. Yes. Uh, which I hate that term. I hate that because he's he he just needs to be taken care of in a little bit different way. Um, you know, it triggers me. Yeah. It I, I, I get you, <laughs> but you know, it doesn't really bother me at all. No, you know? but um, so. Let's let's talk about Derek's specific special need. Mm -hmm. All right, he has um, cerebral palsy with a um, kind of like a 
a, a minor side. I don't know how you would um, uh, kind of include that, but there's a little aut- autism spectrum. Uh, a little bit, yeah, on the a spectrum bit in there. He's mobile. He can move. He understands, comprehends everything. Cannot speak. Um, he has probably um, the mentality of like a six-year-old child. Okay. Uh, he can figure things out. He's kind of smart, but kind of not. And he's more into routine. Like if you tell him to get up, go over to the chair, pick this up, put this over here, you do that with him every night, he's, he's good. But if you kind of break that routine and tell him to go put that on the table, it just kind of... Blows his mind, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So he, um, you know... It's a, um, but I think that kind of goes to what you were, what I was trying to say to you before about that, about bringing him to, uh, to a show. Um, I think that it, it's just he, well, nowadays we, we can't do that anymore. <laughs> I, we can't bring him to the shows. He gets so overstimulated and he goes off the deep end. Especially, <laughs> especially if I'm there. Yeah, it, but it's, you know. You have a tendency to take people off the deep end. I, it, I do. It, it, it's hard. He gets into his own. Even at home, there's a lot of times he gets into his own. It's like when you're saying, you know, if you tell him to not do something and he'll do it. And then you say no. And then, you you know, when he hears that word no, it's like this tr- this thing goes on and he goes into this zone. You know? And get bad sometimes it really can because you're dealing with a six-year-old mentality that is in a 33 year old body that is uh, the the brain is firing like this you know Mm. picture your son at six years old where he's just he's just on fire you know and you yeah but i could hold him down yeah if that's the problem well yeah i understand the pain because if my six-year-old son was doing something they just like Put a, put my hand on his chest yeah. and say stop. You can't do that with a six foot one, thirty three year old. <laughs> no, <laughs> you no. can't. You know, so, um, so getting back to that is that that's part of the, you know, uh, when you were saying something about um, you know bring him to shows and you know um, being there, um, you know, um, like during holidays and everything like that because there's been countless. I, how many Thanksgivings I've been in Europe or on the road, you know what I'm saying? How many birthdays I've missed, you know what I'm saying? And with him, I mean, literally, his birthday is just another day. Christmas, he him has I, no... Him and I got a lot in common. Uh, but he has no conception of time. He has no idea whether it's 9 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock at night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, December, January. He has no idea. I could tell him every single day when he wakes up in the morning that today is Christmas and he would believe. <laughs> That's and, what I was going to say. You can't tell him like tomorrow's your birthday. Y- you can. Yeah. And he'll be like, oh, okay. And but, but what I've found is people with special needs across the board are some of the happiest people in the, in the world. It's like I go to a coffee shop in the morning and they employ special needs people. Brilliant. It's the greatest. It's in a church. So it's doing couple things it's bringing people into church it's giving people special needs jobs it's teaching them how to interact with people and i love it now i was saying to a friend of mine as we're walking out i said you and i we make a pretty good living and some days we get up and we're miserable these people are making what eight nine dollars maybe ten dollars an hour and they couldn't be happier because they don't have that self-awareness you know one day if they ever become self-aware it's almost a tragedy yeah i i mean i i think that it's also it's not about for them because we go to this place. I, I, I was know. just going to say, there's a deli by you that hires all special needs yeah. people, correct? Can I say that? Absolutely. Name? Absolutely. Yeah. Say whatever you want. <clears throat> it's called the No Limits Cafe. And they're only open from like 11 to like 3 o'clock and they just serve lunch. But their entire staff is special needs people. Autism, Down syndrome, everything. Um, you know, and it's the first time that when I went in there, um, I was, I was, I have this really um, short emotional fuse when it comes to that because you know but you, have, you have a soft spot for, that, and they though. were cutting a lot of onions in there, <laughs> a lot of onions. I mean, they, it was insane. Uh, so I, I, I mean, like we walk in yeah. and there's some kid there, 
that says, hello, my name is Jacob and welcome to No Limits Cafe. And you could just see everybody's face in there. They're just happy to be a part of things. It's not about the grind. It's not about the money. It's not about this. It's about, I, I, I could do this. Yeah, absolutely. And I support Isn't those Isn't it about places. purpose? Huh? Yes. It's about purpose. 100%. Yeah. You know, on purpose. The, other, the other thing too is like, I mean, <clears throat> one of the most amazing things, uh, uh, speaking of special needs, people. Derek went to uh, his first prom, <laughs> um, had it at his school, right? And I, you know, we would go to his school, they'd have little parties and everything like that. But, you know, Derek, you know, we got him a tuxedo, we got him all dressed up, and he loves to be around this. We brought him there, and that was probably one of the days that I felt like I was completely missing everything about how they think and how they live because there was this girl in this wheelchair and I've seen her a dozen times picking Derek up from school. She wheeled in and she was in, she can't walk. She was in this dress, had the boot knee or the, you know, the flowers around there, her hair all done, makeup and earrings and smiling from ear to ear. And I, oh, I lost it. They were cutting right onions there. in there too, aren't so, they? Li Liquid Church does this. So I don't know if you've heard of the church, Liquid Church. They, no, they no. do what's called a night to shine. And I think one year they had uh, Tim Tebow come in because he does a lot of work with special needs kids. And I've, I've been there, and I've seen the pictures. These kids, they, it's to the nines. Most kids who go to high school and go to the prom don't give a shit. But these kids, it was the biggest event in the world, and it's so beautiful. It was unbelievable. You know, having, again, is just like, this is their, this, this is their moment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're not special needs at this moment. No. At that moment, that girl was going into her prom with her dress on and her hair. And I said, that's what it's She all was like about. a prom queen at that point. You that's know, that what was, it's that was all. Everything. That, you, you can't teach that. Mm. You cannot teach that. You have to experience that and see that and say, that's genuine. Well, you that's know, I, real. <laughs> I, I see that all the time, you know, as, as you know, being involved in Special Olympics. You know, you go to these these Special Olympics games, you know, whether it be the summer games, winter games, or whatever, and, and you see the these athletes putting their all into it. It's amazing. You know, and, and to put a medal on their neck, it's one of the most heartwarming feelings that, that I could ever, I can't even, exp I couldn't even put it into words. Yeah. You, you know, know, just just seeing how, how happy they are. I, I'm very, I'm very, very biased, obviously, because of my situation with my son. But, you know, it is the greatest thing on the planet, and sometimes it is the worst thing on it, the planet. It's got to be an enormous amount of work. Not haven't, really. Haven't, it is, uh, no, no. I, I'm surprised at that. I'm surprised you answered that way. The, the work that um, I would probably say the hardest work is to, kind of like what I was saying to you before we started talking about this, it's like an, it's an, a covert defense because <clears throat> let me explain is that he is set in his ways for example like when we were saying about him telling him no or picking something up or he's in his routine or he does this or that or we're out at the store and or, he just doesn't want to be at the store ordering videos <laughs> <laughs> or he doesn't want to be at the store and then he just was like he gets in his zone and he just starts getting combative and then he lays down on the ground and it's like, okay. So you kind of have to, you can't fight that. You'll never win ever, 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 ever. You fight. If you fight him one inch, you've already lost the battle. Did that ever happen in a supermarket where somebody gave you the side eye? You know, somebody's like control your kid. Do, do no, no. Uh, we've uh, I've had one confrontation. Usually, a lot of people, you know, because he's always like he'll just be standing there and he'll be like, "Hi," <laughs> and he'll just start talking to him or showing him his shirt or it's like, which is know, usually an overkill shirt, <laughs> pretty much. But you know, now now getting back to that prom that he went to, yes, he's a thirty three year old man. 
That's correct. He's oh, a man. Okay. He's getting gray hair and he's getting a bald spot, which is just <laughs> <laughs> makes me laugh. <laughs> so I give him a, a shower every day and I'm like, yeah, here you go, buddy. <laughs> gray hair. <laughs> I, I don't know how to approach this subject because it's something that I've wondered. As, as people with special needs get older, Yes. And, and Derek has a six-year-old mentality, but he's got a man's body. He's going to a prom, seeing pretty girls all dressed up. Does he? Does he have? Does he Male. get drawn to? No, there's none of that. It's no. it's a it's totally because I I don't I don't know where the the hormones would take over versus his mentality, and that's just something I'm, I'm well, wondering. Um, I I I don't think that he's. I mean, imagine. Imagine a six-year-old. A six-year-old really doesn't, like, you know, have a desire for... They got girl germs. Right. They're you, you understand? They, still view, the they face. view everybody the same. It's like, you know, they're friends. This, uh, I have this. She's a female and he's a male. There's, there's, you know, I don't think... I've never seen anything like that. Okay. But I, you know, it's the hormones, you know. I'm wondering if because they have their 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 everything about their their biology is an adult. Trust me. There's been a couple times where I <laughs> I wake I walk in to wake them up in the morning and there's things going on. <laughs> <laughs> Enough, so said. Enough, Enough said. Enough said. <laughs> oh my god. Next. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're like, oh, Jesus Christ, we yeah. saw that. And the, the 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 funniest thing about that is is that he knows. It's just so funny because you see, I, I mean. Does he do the duck and cover? No, he does, he does the, <laughs> the hands come out and he's like, you know. I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's like this. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I think uh, I, I I don't I don't I I've never seen him in that in kind of that aspect. I mean, like he'll he. He's affectionate with everybody. Right. He's, he hugs everybody. You know, I mean, you've seen him a thousand times. He just, he'll go up to males, females, and, you know, just hug them. I mean, anybody. Are, yeah, anybody. anybody. Now, when you, were, when you were growing up, obviously, I don't know whether you wanted kids growing up or you didn't want kids. Yeah. You, you probably had your th this thought in your head. You know, like every every young man does. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to have a boy one day. I'm going to have a child one day. You have a certain... Um, you have, a, you have a certain mindset of how it's going to go. Like, mm -hmm. you play it out in your head. Absolutely. And then you find out that you're having a child. You had to be so proud and so oh, happy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then you find... And I was young, too. I was 20, 22, 23. Oh, wow. Yeah. You find out that your your son is special needs. Mm -hmm. Tell us that feeling. 